Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the first initial step of um, the data validation and uploading process that takes um, a contributed pollen data set and then uploads it to Neotoma. And so um, what I'm starting off with here that you can see on my screen is um, a pollen data set of mine from um, a paper from Lake Edward. The publication is Ivory and Russell 2016, as you can see up there. Um, and what I've done so far is just um, copied and pasted the data, the raw counts, raw pollen counts of the data from an Excel spreadsheet um, and put them into a blank uh, Tilia spreadsheet. And the way that I have this organized is that um, each of the samples are the columns and then each of the rows are the taxa. And so the things that I've added directly from the spreadsheet um, are the depths within the sediment core. Um, I put starting in column H, um, you know, going towards the right um, in the very first row. And then another really important thing is that the ages that were assigned to those samples in the publication, you also should include in that spreadsheet uh, in the first, um, the first uh, sort of taxon row here underneath these uh, metadata labels. And so what I usually do is I just copy and paste those ages that were assigned based on the published age model in that first row. You need to give it a name, and I usually make that name the same as the citation for that paper. So this one, I, I put Ivory and Russell 2016. And then you need to add a chronology code. And so since this is the published chronology that I put in here, um, I just designate this with a pound sign and then cron one. So that I just copied and pasted in from a spreadsheet. Um, and then the, the next thing that you'll need to do is add um, another one of these little metadata rows before you actually like copy and paste in the counts. And that just um, gives information about the sample analyst for each of the pollen samples. So oftentimes it's the same analyst for all pollen samples, but sometimes that's, sometimes that's of course not the case. And so you might have different names in here. Um, for me, I, all, I, have, I have just the, the same name. So I wrote sample analyst in here, and then uh, this first row has a pound samp dot analyst. Um, so if you just make sure that that row is there, um, that is, is also really important. And so then the last thing that I did then was I just copied and pasted in um, all of the pollen, pollen taxon names as they were um, given to me, as they would be given to you from um, from that data set contributor. So for so since it's my data set, it's the names that I assigned to the pollen taxa, but for um, a data set that would be contributed to you that someone else generated, um, these would be the author assigned names. Um, and then the raw pollen counts. And a couple of things I want to point you to first before we go into doing um, taxon name validation um, are other things that you might wanna include um, in this spreadsheet at the bottom, which is if you get any um, concentration information, information for calculating concentrations, I usually put that at the bottom of the spreadsheet. That's, you know, so for this data set, that is the number of lycopodium spike counted on um, in, within a sample, the total number of lycopodium spores within a tablet. So that for me, that was 13, 9, 11. Um, the sample quantity, so for me this is a, a volume, 1.25 uh, milliliters, and then how many lycopodium tablets were added to the sample. So we use that to calculate concentrations. And then finally, if you have um, information for other useful data sets that were generated at the same time as the pollen data, you can also include that. So I have microcharcoal counted on the pollen slides um, down at the bottom as well, and I'll show you how to treat that in a little bit. But the first thing that then uh, we need to do after we have the data just uh, copied and pasted into this Tilia spreadsheet is start um, validating the taxon names. Um, and then one other note that I, I wanted to make sure that I said as well is that, you know, I would begin, I would save this spreadsheet um, as soon as I had, you know, gotten it into this form um, at all of the values copied and pasted into it um, and then save it at each step along the way in case there's like some bug or some problem that you encounter um, so that you can always go back to like your most recent spreadsheet. So, um, you know, go make sure you go in, 
um, and save your spreadsheet as some name as I have done there. Okay, so um, the next, the first step that we want to do is go through all of these names and validate them against uh, the ta the taxon lists that are already within Neotoma. So since the African pollen in database in particular um, is really pretty new to be included within Neotoma, there are a lot of, um, in particular, trop tropical specific uh, taxon names that are not yet within Neotoma. So you may find that once you um, you check your list of taxon names against the Neotoma name tables that there may be many that are not found um, within that. And so at that point, I, I'm also going to make a video that shows you how to add new taxon names to the Neotoma taxon names tables. Um, but for now, I'm just going to show you how to validate the names against uh, what already exists within Neotoma. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up to tools and then click this validate taxon names option. Um, it's going to uh, ask you to provide the location of the, the taxa lookup file. Um, this uh, this auto generates for me within um, my setup. Um, and so I just use the default settings when I when I downloaded and installed Tilia. So likely that works for you as well. Um, but if you have to browse to find that, um, you know, you should if this if this field is empty, you should browse to find that file. And then I just click validate. Um, and it will first ask for like a, a few synonyms that it has found um, regarding um, the taxa that are within my list. Uh, and so one that it finds is that I have Olea Africana listed here. Um, that name has since changed to Olea Europea subspecies Cuspidata. Um, and so what I, the rule of thumb that I have a tendency to do is that if there is a name that has been updated um, since the, the African Pollen Database official taxonomy, so Af the Olea Africana is the official African Pollen Database name for that pollen morphotype, um, what I will do is I will update, I will let Neotoma update that taxon name, but I will save the original idea, ID. And so one thing that I think is, is really important is that we want later to, for, to be able to, for people to be able to go back and look at data sets and be able to trace the names that were assigned by authors and that are in their publications back to the data sets um, that are now uploaded to Neotoma. And so you'll see later in the event of like misspellings and stuff like that, we don't want to save the original ID, but in the event of taxonomic updates or like other name changes that would differ from the publication, I think it's probably most prudent to save, to click this save the original ID uh, checkbox um, before you uh, move on so that that synonym is is included within your uh, spreadsheet file. Okay, and then I'm going to click replace check names and then it's going to take me to a few, a list a few other taxa that it cannot find uh, within the Neotoma name tables. And so oftentimes these fall within three categories. Most often they are going to be things that are misspelled. Misspellings are super common um, in contributed data sets or things that just have slightly different like wordings for names. Um, and then sometimes as well, uh, they may be, there may be things that have been taxonomically updated. And so you have to kind of go through the same step that I just showed you, which is to assign a more updated synonym to that name and then keep that original ID. Um, and then the last, the last case scenario may be that you have um, some taxa that are not yet included within the Neotoma um, taxa tables, and so you will have to add those manually. But for those first two categories of things, misspellings and taxonomic updates, oftentimes um, you can resolve all those issues within this fine taxa name uh, window that is up right now. Okay, so common things I have like purposefully put on here are... Um, are categories like broken pollen grains. So I, in my spreadsheets, I always call things that are broken and unidentifiable broken, uh, but that is not how Neotoma wants these to be called. And so Neotoma wants them to be called indeterminable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to search for an alternative name that's the acceptable name that we want uh, Neotoma to assign to this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just type in, I don't have to type in the whole thing. I know that it's indeterminable is what I want. So I'm going to type in indet and then um, a percent sign after it, and that's going to then um, do a wildcard search. And so I click the little spy glasses, 
and then um, indeterminable and a bunch of other options also uh, pop up. I'm going to click on indeterminable and then uh, replace with highlighted taxon name. And so this window pops up when I try to do that, mostly so that um, it can ask me if I, again, want to save the original identification. So because changing broken to indeterminable is essentially um, the same thing, I'm just picking the official Neotoma name. Um, you can sort of think about this as like a misspelling. And so I am not going to save the original identification and I'm going to press OK. And then it takes care of that one. So I also have a tendency to abbreviate stuff um, in my, um, my pollen data sets. And so, for example, I've got monocot on here. Obviously, we're talking about, you know, all of the monocotyledons. Um, and so I have to actually pick the correct taxonomic name. So I'm going to do the same thing, put monocot and then percent sign there and then um, click that and then um, grab monocotyledone, replace with higher taxon. And again, because this is um, basically essentially a misspelling, I just, I simplified, I abbreviated, I am not gonna save the original identification, press okay and resolve that. So, and I, I have a tendency sometimes, and I think others do as well for some things to use common names. So if you have common names, you're going to have to kind of do the same thing that I've just done with the last two. You're going to have to actually assign that uh, pollen taxon name, its you know official uh, taxonomic Latin name. So for mosses, for example, um, I want these to be in the bryophyta. So I'm going to just put bryo in there. Ooh, that gives me a lot. But bryophyta is right there. So replace with higher taxon. Again, this is just me replacing a Latin name for a common name. So I'm going to say, do not save original identification, and then OK. And so that leaves me with um, this pollen taxon name that I have named uh, Vernonia paroteti. And so this is one that I um, realized as soon as I started validating taxon names to put data onto Neotoma, I had been spelling wrong for like the last 15 years. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is, this is you know, um, a plant name that I would I would want to before adding this is a, a name that does not exist within Neotoma and so the first thing that I would want to do when I encounter a name like this where it's not a, a clear obvious replacement to me so the first time I did this it wasn't clear what what the what I should actually assign for for this uh, Vernonia taxon um, what I did is I I this is where you're gonna have to kind of go to the internet and start like looking to verify whether you have spelled something wrong um, or if there has been a taxonomic update. So another thing that I could click do is I could look up Vernonia and see if I find anything that looks like a misspelling. And so there's Vernonias in here, um, and there are a couple of other uh, Vernonia species and types that are, are already listed within Neotoma, but this Vernonia near Perioteti uh, is very clearly like not in there yet unless um, some of these are synonyms. And so um, what I'm going to do then is I will go and try to verify whether this is actually a current um, up-to-date taxon name, in which case I would want to add the correctly spelled version of that into the Neotoma taxon tables. Or if it is not a currently accepted taxon name, I would want to replace it, um, associate it with the correct um, up-to-date taxon name. And so the best way to start that is to use a couple of different resources. So the African Plant Database, um, is one of the best places to start in order to look up your taxon names to verify taxonomy. Um, and also uh, Tropicos is another website that you should use in order to um, not just look up ver to verify taxonomy, but also to look for the publications that are associated with that name for, for adding in um, taxon names later if you need to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to as you can see, I've already um, searched Vernonia a couple of times, um, and so I'm just going to search that. And when I search Vernonia, you can see, first of all, there's a lot of uh, different species of Vernonia. Um, and uh, if you look at this column right here, see under, this will be a good reference for giving you a sense of if names associated with the particular taxon that you searched have likely been updated. And you can see from many of these species, there have been, um, there are other names that are associated um, with, with different species of Renonia. Okay, so um, I'll look for my 
particular species of Renonia, but it seems likely that there's some update in taxonomy that I'm going to have to uh, account for. Mm, we're getting close. Okay, and so here we are. So Vernonia paratetti, um, and you can see that now there is there's another name that it's telling me to to see under Polydoria cereuloides. Um, and so I'm going to click on Vernonian. We can look at that entry and just sort of verify what the updated name is. And so on this page of the African plant database for uh, Vernonia paratetti, you can see that under the status, it says for tropical Africa rejected, the name is rejected, and is a synonym of Polydora uh, serratuloides. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I want to update this name with this new um, updated taxon name. So I'll go back to my, my Tilia, and instead of searching for Vernonia, instead I want to search for Polydora, and what I find is that Polydora um, ceratoloides is now um, already within the Neotoma table, so I can replace uh, Vernonia paratetti with the updated taxon name, and so I'll do that. But because the the published within the published data set, I use this name Vernonia, um, I want to still keep that associated synonym with the data set, so that it's, it's you're able to backtrace. Um, you're able to trace back uh, the, the names um, that it's, that information is, is kept that like links it to the publication, I guess. And so I'm going to press, click OK, and all my taxon names have been resolved, and I'll click OK again. And so now most of these um, metadata columns have been filled in, if you look back through here, um, with the exception of um, a few of the green algae that I also identified in the slides. Uh, but because, um, but oftentimes with these green algae, um, if you oftentimes, there are um, multiple different element categories that they could fall under. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to want to do at this point in order to fill in some of those last um, metadata columns is I am going to uh, validate the, the metadata as well. And so I'll do that by going back up to tools um, and um, I take that back. I will go um, up here to tools and click on variable lookup. And so then I can just click OK. And it's going to try to resolve some of um, these missing spaces. And what I can do is I can click on this blank um, element cell and then just assign my green algae to what it was that I identified. I'm going to call this a polynomorph. These are NPPs. And so I will just um, fill those in. Okay, and so now I'm going to save again, and you can see that now basically all of my um, spreadsheet have been filled in with the exception um, of this concentration information at the bottom. And so I'm going to do the same thing that I did um, at the top with those green algae. I'm going to pick uh, the option uh, from these drop-down menus that corresponds to um, the concentration information. And so um, one thing you also want to be careful of is that for your counted like a podium spores for calculating concentration, oftentimes, um, you know, the atoma will recognize like a podium and it assigns it to a spore. Um, you're going to want to change that category. This is the like a podium that you counted. So that gets changed to counted. And then instead of number of individual specimens, um, under units, you're going to want to choose number, okay? And then for your Lycopodium tablets, that's the, the total amount of Lycopodium within a single tablet. Um, this is the concentration of that tablet. And then your units is going to be grains per tablet. For sample quantity, I did mine in volume. 
Um, it will be different if you did uh, some other uh, quantification of your sample and then um, milliliters. As I said, it was one and a quarter milliliters. And then finally, for like the, the number of like a podium tablets, I picked quantity added and then again, number. And so some of these might vary depending on uh, how, what concentration information you actually um, have contributed to you, but that is um, how this works, you know, for this for this spreadsheet, for example. Okay, so I'm going to save it one last time, and before um, I finish this up and move on to the metadata, there's one last step that I need to do for this uh, particular pollen data set, and that's I need to take care of this charcoal. Um, so the charcoal needs to be added to Neotoma as a completely separate data set. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I need to add in um, two rows down here by the charcoal. And so in the first row, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Tilia that this is actually a separate data set. So I right click on this first cell, go into the metadata menu and click data set type. And that should have this blue line then go across here. That is, um, you know, an entire indicating it's a completely different data set. And then at that point, then that allows me to um, look at a drop down menu here and pick from a variety of different data set types. So this is micro charcoal. I'm going to pick that. Um, and then kind of like above, we had a sample analyst column under our age model. I need that another one of those sample analyst columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to the top. I'm going to control C and then go back down to the bottom of the spreadsheet again. And control V and add that sample analyst. OK, and so then um, just as I included concentration information with the pollen to cal calculate pollen concentrations and green algae concentrations, I need to include that information again. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all those four columns that I used, uh, that I included with the pollen data set, control C um, and control V, and include those then also um, at the bottom of the spreadsheet. You'll notice that there's still one cell that um, is empty, and I'm going to want to go to this drop down menu um, and look for the right, um, it's a bunch of different size fractions listed here. Essentially what you want to know is, um, is sort of like what, what size fraction charcoal is measured, measured in a variety of different size fractions. What size fraction is this associated with? If that information is available, this was micro charcoal um, without a more specific size fraction. So these are micro fragments. Okay, and so that is basically the end of the initial data set import into Tilia and uh, taxon validation. Um, I will have a separate video for showing you how to add new taxon names um, into the Neotoma name tables, um, as well as for showing you how to do metadata. But you know that is it for this first step. A uh, note as well that this exact same spreadsheet will be included in the folder where these videos are stored. So you can look um, at that spreadsheet directly within Tilia to see how I have it formatted.